I've worked in the South Carolina healthcare system for almost half a century. I'm at 48 years now. Grew up in South Carolina. I actually started in college as an orderly and ambulance attendant at my hometown hospital. So I've, I've been, you know, truly from the ground up as far as being in the health system. I've been very involved with both direct patient care, with managing others in health systems, and I've been fortunate enough to be able to work to help build collaborative efforts to try to improve the quality of care, the safety of care, the access to care, and that has really helped shape my focus as far as where I would like to lead and advocate, and one of those areas has been telehealth. At the beginning of this year, I was having increasing abdominal symptoms, pain, other kinds of discomfort. And then I, the family members noticed that I was starting to turn yellow. The, the grandchildren were fascinated by that. I knew that I was, I was getting jaundiced. So something was causing a blockage. So I went in, had a, a biopsy done that confirmed that it was cancer of the head of the pancreas and that I needed to go into treatment. And when they removed the head of the pancreas and they removed the gallbladder to do a lot of, have to rerouting of the, of the GI system, gastrointestinal system, they confirmed that it was localized to the head, the margins were clear, the lymph nodes looked good, and I, so I had stage one. So that was good news. When I had the opportunity for the first time ever to be a telehealth patient, and they offered me palliative care, and I said, well, can I do it via telehealth? And they said, absolutely. I set it up, and it was nice to, just to be able to get on early, have it on the screen. I could move around the house, do other things. I didn't have to sit in a waiting room. Good to see you again. Good to see you. Hope you had a good weekend. Yeah, I did. How about you? There is a, a common misconception that palliative care and hospice are the same thing. And hospice is sometimes a part of someone's care at the end of their life. But palliative care is much more than hospice. We prefer to see patients earlier in their disease because we're able to really help them live as well as, as they can for as long as they can. So palliative care basically is a holistic approach for people with any kind of chronic illness on how you're dealing with it from a physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, functional, financial standpoint. Uh, and they're addressing that holistic approach that often the doctor who's mainly focused on your care doesn't not have the time or resources or necessarily the expertise to do. Oh, okay. Telemedicine lends itself so nicely to palliative care because we are able to meet people who maybe otherwise couldn't physically get to a, an outpatient clinic appointment. And so we've been able to serve people from all over the state the natural reach of telemedicine has been invaluable to our patients. There are plenty of patients that, even if they don't live a long way away, having to drive downtown to MUSC is not a fun experience. Nothing wrong with the facilities, it's the parking and just dealing with the traffic. We are able to sort of take that off their plate, if you will, by having telemedicine, that we're able to see them at home. I think we need to be able to show people that there's a very large component of care that you receive that can be done just as well or better via telehealth. To be a patient on one end of that, I felt like I was in the room with the clinicians. But I will also say that I felt maybe a little bit safer uh, in the sense and a little bit braver to share aspects of my life and challenges I was having that I might not do when I'm in the room with somebody. It's a difference. When they said, what is the thing that concerns you the most? And I said, the uncertainty. And they said, not surprising, you're a physician. So physicians, other clinicians, don't like uncertainty. We don't like to be uncertain about a diagnosis. We don't like to be in situations where it's not certain what we can do. And now for the first time, you're faced with kind of the ultimate uncertainty. You've got a cancer diagnosis that even with all the treatment could still progress. To have people who have expertise in the holistic view of someone's health issues to be able to talk with. I mean, I can have discussions with them I'm not gonna have with my family. I'm a strong believer in that 
Medicines alone aren't gonna to get you there. Surgery alone is not gonna get you there. Faith, friendship, love, but also somebody to help you realize that uncertainty is what it is. And you can't get caught up in the fear and uncertainty. You've got to think about, you know, what are the positives there? And that you're going to come out of this and you're going to be stronger. And having, you know, folks other than family say it, it makes a difference. I think that he's already been an advocate for palliative care. And so that's been wonderful to see. He's been a long-term advocate for telemedicine, and so we're so thankful for his work that's allowed us to do what we're doing now in the delivery of telemedicine. They're the best care business I've ever had. So I can, I can bear witness as a, as a real patient that palliative care and telehealth can make a real difference in the, in the care of a patient and really can provide the support that so many patients need. So I'm gonna be even a stronger leader and advocate now having had first-hand experience.